Hey, GovCon Giants family, Eric Coffey here, your host. And today, our guest, Frank Spencer III of Aztec Contractors out of El Paso, Texas. We feature Frank and we discuss how he first got started in business, where he originally bought his father's defunct construction company, but it was just really a name that he bought. We talk about that, how he's working with high-profiling teaming partners, uh, what he did to do his, when his first contract, his second contract, the SBA loan he received, and much, much more in today's episode. I can tell you, even after interviewing more than a dozen such contractors, each story is unique in its own merit. And what I found is that it's almost like a movie script where they are the protagonist in their own story and it's a hero's journey. So if you would like to be the protagonist in your own story and write your own particular script, Visit us over at govconedu.com for more information. If you have any questions about all of or any of the offerings that we have, please, please, please give us a call 786-477-0477. Stay tuned for today's episode with Frank Spencer III. Hi, uh, good morning. My name is Frank Spencer III, I'm president of Aztec Contractors uh, located in El Paso, Texas. Okay. Now, Frank, before, um, just before we, you know, we, formally open this up. You and I were kind of talking offline and you said you have a son? Yes. Yes. Okay. I have a five-year-old son. Uh-huh. And what's his name? His name is Frank Spencer the fourth. Okay. We call him Panchito. And can you explain what's Panchito? Yes. Panchito is um, the uh, nickname. So in Spanish, Pancho is Frank. And so little Pancho would be Panchito, adding the ITO at the end. And so I, they called me Panchito growing up. And now, you know, I, we call my son Panchito. So it's pretty cool. My dad is also Frank. Um, and my aunts and uncles, they call him Pancho. And so they still call me Panchito. And then both me and my son look when they say Panchito because, you know, we're all <laughs> Panchito. Like so we got a bunch of Panchitos. Yeah, a bunch of <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Not enough ponchos and too many ponchitos. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I love it. Uh, now you're in El Paso, Texas. Have you always been there? Yes. Yes. I was uh, actually born and raised in, in uh, Pecos, Texas, which is a small town east of El Paso. It's about 235 miles from here. Um, but I've been in El Paso. I started the business here um, and I've been here about uh, close to 20, 22 years. Okay. Now, how, how big is El Paso? I don't even, I didn't even look it up. How big is it? So it depends. If, if uh, we're, population is about 700 to 800,000, mm -hmm. but if we're so close to Juarez, which is the border, um, you know, we would be at, including some of the, the people from Juarez at a million. Okay. 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 All right. And the, you went to university. What did you study? So um, I went, I graduated from, well, I actually went to, a military high school in Roswell, New Mexico, New Mexico Military Institute. Um, from the Institute, I, I played football and I got to represent the United States in Australia, Hawaii. Um, and then I ended up going to Texas A&M University. I did not play, wasn't good enough to play division one football, but uh, graduated from Texas A&M with a, a bachelor's degree. I was an English major and a minor in sociology. Okay. And then, um, I had the emphasis of going into law school. Um, so that, that was the plan. Okay. Okay. That was it. All right. I, I didn't see that part. I was missing that part of the story. So I wanted yeah. to bring that in. Okay. And then how did you get into construction? So my father uh, owned Aztec Contractors. Um, he started it in 1983 in Beckles. And Beckles is a small town. So he was a, he's a civil engineer and a professional land surveyor, mm -hmm. but moving back to Pecos, he had to get into construction to kind of make ends meet. So he started Aztec in 83. It got, it became incorporated in Texas in 1989. And he was primarily doing small homes, residential projects in Pecos, um, you know, little build outs here and there, but this was all in the Reeves County area. And so in 2006, I had been in the mortgage industry for several years. And, you know, if you remember 2006, that's when our market tanked. And I really needed, I didn't, I needed something else. I needed a challenge. Um, so I remember like it was yesterday, it was on Thanksgiving day. Um, I had a talk with my father back in, in, in 05. And I said, look, 
I'd like to, you know, give this a shot. Um, and I ended up purchasing the name or the company from my father, um, you know, it had been dormant for over a decade. Um, so really just buying the name. Um, and then we kicked off our first job in 2007. It was a private job. And then, uh, we kind of, the rest is history. We, we, uh, started looking into how to get different certifications to work with the government. And, um, you know, we kind of just started track, tracking along after that. So you founded it in 2006. And then um, now I, I, I had the privilege of reading your story. You said your father sold it to you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you would think that um, he would have just said, hey, you know, change the name, you know, uh, ownership. Now, my dad, you know, that's one thing that, you know, we we're very close family. And I'm very appreciative for how my father raised us. Um, every summer we had to work, you know, growing up, you know, we were kids. Um, I remember being out there with him on the, you know, holding up the, the, the rod for surveyors. Um, you know, so he, it's something he instilled in us at a very early age um, that nothing's given to you. You got to work for it. And um, so, yeah, no, he, um, he knew I didn't have any money. Um, and, uh, in fact, when my first office, I officed out of his building, he cut out a little, carved out a little space for me and, you know, another employee and we got charged rent. We got charged to use his accountant. Um, I mean, it, it was, it was brutal. It was brutal. But looking back, you know, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Um, it was the right thing. Uh, the, it's the best thing he could have done um, to show me the value of work you know, um, you know, how to take care of things when things start going good. Cause you know, my, this, my road has been nothing but, you know, a bunch of different obstacles that we had to overcome over the last 14 years. Wow. Well, wow. no, um, that's interesting. Did you, it was brutal in the beginning. How, how did you feel about it? Did you, you said, dad, why are you making me do this? Or like, what, how did you feel? Yeah, no, we had those talks, you know, I, I didn't quite understand um, how, you know, how I could be, you know, you know, he knew, again, I had no funding, I had no, we had no work. In fact, the very first project that we did, um, right out of the gate, you know, we never got paid our fee, we got paid our overhead, but it was based on the sale of these condos that we built. And um, because the market tanked yeah. we never saw our fee and wow. so and he was charging me and so we had one of those discussions saying look i need some help and he's like you know i'm i'm this is part of it he is always kind of said look you have to go through these things and then you know after we finished that job we had no fee uh so we were still working on trying to get banks to back us and we were bidding jobs we weren't winning them and so it's just kind of like, what am I doing? You know, I'm going to throw my hands up in the air and say, look, I, I can't do this anymore. I can't hold. Um, so he, he, he did a good job of talking me through these things and saying, look, this is just kind of, you just got to weather the storm, hold, 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 you know, you're going to see it. It's going to happen uh, time. Um, and, um, you know, like looking back, I mean, he, he was right. I mean, there's a lot of things that happened to me that kind of to your point, not everybody skyrockets and and sometimes those that skyrocket it just seems like everything's that easy to do when in reality it, it sometimes doesn't work that way um, so sort of kind of pay your dues if you will oh, i like that's a that's a great uh, analogy pay your dues i like that um so from again from what i've read understanding so in the beginning you said you didn't have any when you start trying to get into the government space right um, that was a couple years in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we got our 8A certification in February of 2009. Okay. And, um, you know, again, I understood, you know, through the SBA, you know, I was one of those guys that the SBA trainings, those 7J trainings, the, yeah. everything that I could possibly get my hands on, I was going to, I was reading about and, you know, going through the motions and 
trying to figure out how do I, how do I get in? How do I do this work? Okay. Now I have this certification. And so what's next? Um, and I was very, very quickly, I understood that um, one of my biggest struggles was going to be the infrastructure. I didn't have the right infrastructure to support some of these government contracts, but I had enough past performance to just at least get the government to give me a chance. And that was where the struggle came in is, you know, the same story. Hey, Frank, sorry, you know, great presentation, great capability statement, but you just don't have the past performance. You just don't have the past performance. You just, you know, and it just got old after just, you know, every single time I'm like, and this was a true story. Um, it was through that contact contract that I got at Homestead, Florida, that I told the, the contracting officer, uh, I said, listen, um, you know, I, I told it, I, if, if you don't give me a chance, you're, you're never going to know if I have the ability to perform. Just give me a shot. And I told him the story about my dad when he met my mom. Uh, you know, he saw her walking on this sidewalk and he drove up next to her and, you know, he gave, uh, offered his hand out to help her get off of the, the little ledge she was walking on. He walked her to her, uh, her dorm and, you know, he said, look, you know, I'd like to take you out. She's like, well, no, she's like, I don't know you. And he's like, well, you're never going to get to know me unless you give me a chance. So I threw that line. I mean, I threw every line I could at <laughs> just, to, just to let them just say, let me play, oh, you yeah, know, just no. give me a chance to play. Right. right. That's all I'm asking for. You know, what's interesting about that is we say the same thing. Okay. I don't have past performance. You won't give me a shot without past performance. So how do I get past the not past performance? Like if no one lets me in, how do I ever get past past performance to show you that I can do it? And right. it's like, wait, you don't have bonding. Well, I can't get bonding without doing work to show that I deserve bonding. Exactly. <laughs> so something in there. It's, it's, you know, there's no communication going on. No, and it's a horrible thing. I mean, it, it, and it truly, again, you find yourself um, you know, I think, you know, every entrepreneur, you know, business person understands the feeling of it's kind of a lonely, a lonely island sometimes. And that is so true during that period of time, because yeah, you, you, you can't, you're stuck, you're in limbo. Um, and it's, um, uh, it definitely mentally, uh, you know, it, it gets to you, um, and, and that's kind of where the story stems out with GSA giving our first job um that when you were talking about in homestead florida now tell I, I mean you and i were talking about that that was kind of offline conversation so now fast forward you get the 8a in 2009 you're wow. out doing these capability briefings and then what happens so you know from uh 2011 so 2009 get the 8a certification we're hustling we're, we're we're going networking we're doing our thing doing capability presentations and finally 2011 um after numerous trips to Fort Worth district, because again, we're in El Paso and um, the expense, the investment to fly out there, you know, to, you know we always had to spend the, at least one night there. Um, and, you know, going through my spill with GSA saying, look, please just give me a chance. So finally, I get this email from contracting officer out of the Fort Worth district GSA. And uh, he's like, Frank, uh, I got a project for you. Can you handle it? I said, absolutely. He says, okay, I'm going to email it to you. He didn't say anything about the specifics of the job. He says, you'll get an email. Get the email. I'm all excited. I open it up and, you know, I'm looking, I'm reading through the, 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 the scope of work. And then all of a sudden I see Homestead, Florida, and I'm in El Paso, Texas. And this is our first, like, you know, sole source project that had <laughs> come down the pike. And I'm like, oh my God. So I go over to my PM and I said, hey, we just got our first sole source job. I said, but it's in Homestead, Florida. And he looks at me and he's like, Homestead, Florida, where's Homestead, Florida. So we were Googling Homestead, Florida. We didn't even know. By so, the way. Uh, so for context, it's 1900 miles away. Uh, it's, <laughs> for everyone out there listening to this, I just Googled it. It's 1980 miles from El Paso, Texas. There you Homestead, go. Homestead, Florida. Homestead, okay. Florida. By the so, way, so, something I did not mention to you, Frank, uh, I'm just going to show everybody that real quick. <laughs> oh, there it is. See on the screen, right? Look at that. Wow. 
Um, that's, that's actually where I got my start as a homestead. Really? I, I all of my federal contract experience I built up at homestead. Wow. I did. Wow. I did. A, I did. I worked in every building there. Oh my goodness! And the same so, year during the same years. Wow. So yeah. So so we get this, and then we start looking at the scope, and then we sort of do a quick you know rundown in terms of how big is this job, and so it ends up being like. $43,000. So we're in El Paso, Texas. Our first sole source project after two years of being told, no, you don't have past performance to do work with the government. And I'm like, Oscar, I said, we're going to do this. I said, I don't know how we're going to do it. I don't know where we're, I said, but we're going to do this. And so I sent back, I signed it. I sent it back to the contracting officer. And then I was calling my buddies that I play football with. And I said, look, do you have anybody? I need, you know, I need a painter. I need, you know, framer, uh, drywall. And so, I mean, this is, this is how it went down. I mean, then uh, I flew down there, um, I started talking with different subs. Uh, it was also a high, it was an HSDN room. So uh, security was a big deal. Um, but we put it together. Long story short, we did the job. We didn't, make any money but we didn't lose any money and six months later uh eric our uh, gsa gave us uh a job i think it was like 160 180 thousand dollar job doing the same type of work in in el paso so you know that's the story i like to tell a lot of these eight a's that are coming out um and you know just hungry to get work and, and sometimes those opportunities um there's risks uh and but, you know, if they open that door slightly, take it, run with it, bear down. And that's kind of what kicked me off, you know, uh, a $43,000 job. And now we're doing, you know, a $20 million job for the Corps of Engineers out of the Fort, Fort Worth District. No, that's, that's, uh, that's interesting. I, I love that because um, I was recently helping a company, an 8A company. I told them the same thing. And it seems like 40,000 might be the threshold for somebody's agency to test you out because the one we were negotiating yeah. was 40,000. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I told the lady, I said, look, you know, we're a $20 million company and you're giving us a $40,000 project. And she says, yeah, I know, but we've never worked you before. We don't know what you could do and you're capable. So we did that. We negotiated that. And then the second project they gave us was 4 million. Nice. So nice. yeah, cause you just don't, you never know. Right. You just yeah. never know. So, wow, that's interesting. Now, something else that I read, um, I love that story. Uh, do you remember any people you worked with down there at Homestead? Oh, no. Uh -uh. I know. Oh, I don't. Do you remember the contracting person? Uh, no. Yes, I do. Uh, oh, but that was GSA. I never worked with GSA. Though. Yeah, yeah, I do remember the guy. And he's still there. He's still, and we always talk about that story. I always tell him, I said, look, man, you're the only guy that stuck his neck out for me to give but me But he he's in GSA, right? GSA. Okay. You, no, go ahead. You said you always talk about. I'm sorry, I cut you off. I'm sorry. You said you said I'm sorry. You you still talk to him today? Yeah, he he's still he's still a contracting officer there, and um, you know, every so often when I do make my rounds, um, you know, we always talk about that 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 time, and and you know, I told him I said thank you for for throwing that out there for me. I mean, you threw it way out there, but you know, we performed, you know, and and um, so you know, he's he's become a good friend. Something else that um, I was reading about your background was you had a hard time getting bonding in the beginning. Yes. Yes. Tell us, just, you know, Frank, honestly, a lot of people, and, and again, I do want to talk about the $20 million contract, but the, the initial, how do we get to the $20 million is so yeah. critical for people because again, I think if we all had past performance, bonding, capital and resources, right. We could all do <laughs> Yeah. All this wonderful stuff because we have the brain power and the capability, but it's all the other little things that add up to be a big, you know, a right. lot of things and big. So tell us about the bonding hurdles that you were facing in the beginning. So kind of like the, the you know, getting started doing federal work um, and, and even some of the commercial work to, to show the mix, you know, the constant struggle from a financial standpoint for a general contractor is one, again, having the a strong financial liquidity so that you can get bonding um, and, and continue to grow the business. And it took me uh, six years to find uh, a local bank to bank me 
my hometown, which was at the time, uh, I think it's 17,000, 20,000 people, they were banking me to get started. And like I said, six years in, I finally had a local bank bank me. I had a, finally had a local bonding company bond me because I was having to go to an out of town firm to help me with my bonding. And they put some just tremendous hurdles in terms of what it, you know, again, that liquidity. And so I had to get creative and finding ways to get the capital that I needed to demonstrate uh, or give the, the surety, uh, you know, that warm, fuzzy feeling that there was something they could come back to if something didn't go right. And so I had some investors that, you know, again, very expensive, um, but I had no choice. I had to do this because that was the only way I was going to get started. Um, and so like I said six years of just trying to find somebody to back me. Uh, and it probably took me another up to 10 years to finally get out of that assistance to do it on my own. Mm-hmm. And, and to this day, it's a, it's a battle. Um, right. you know, your backlog and you know, what, you, you know, uh, how, wanting them to extend you out because you right. need that other job. You know, sometimes you get in a zone and you're just, you're on fire. You're, you're hitting everything you're bidding and you don't want to let go of the opportunity and you know, you can handle it within your, 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 your team. Uh, but there's always those restrictions. And I think that's probably for a contractor in construction. It's, um, uh, it's an enigma. It's, it's a, it's a challenge. It's, it's a, it's always something that's a tug of war. Yeah. Yeah. The article that I read says that you received a seven J loan. I did. Okay. I did. I went to, so they, we call it uh, the contracting opportunity center and then going back to what I did getting started, reaching out to the SBA, taking all of those trainings, the local, some call it PTAC. Um, this is our contracting opportunity center. Um, they have, uh, uh, they're in arms with like the MBDA, all the different types of assist. The Hispanic Chamber of Commerce was, was very influential in helping us as well. But through the Contracting Opportunity Center, I went to them to help me put together a loan package. And, and Eric, I mean, you probably went through this too. I mean, I promise I have two file, two notebooks that are probably this big, you know, of, of just information that right. we had to put together. Um, to submit to the SBA and we got our million dollar line of credit. Um, thanks to, to the great people that were helping me put the package to, you know, Mr. Anchondo, um, you know, they're at the contracting opportunity center. Uh, but yeah, no, that was a big W for us. That was a big win. Uh, to this day, I still have that loan. Now that, that, excuse me, that line of credit. Now that line of credit is 2 million. Wow. Now let me ask you this. That was with a small bank though, right? Yes, sir. So none of the big banks didn't do anything for you. What was that? Any of the big banks do anything for you? No, yeah. no, right. no, I, I, uh, I couldn't get, um, like I said, I kept all my denial letters. I, I, I hit up every <laughs> single bank in El Paso. I mean, big, small in between. And, but, um, uh, so I just, I kept those letters because that was my, that's my fuel. You know, that, that's what kind of helped me push me through. I said, we're going to make this happen. And we did. I mean, eventually. Frank, what made you have such tenacity? Um, I think, I think early on, um, when I decided to do this, uh, go into this industry and, and take on the challenge of, of, of operating or running a construction company with little to no, uh, uh, experience. Um, my, I went through a program called E-Myth. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with it. Um, I know Michael the book. Gerber. I know okay. the book E-Myth. We visit it. Yeah. So um, I always was one of those guys that it's you know it's it's, it's about working smarter, not harder. Um, and being that as an athlete, um, I've always been involved in team type um, athletics, and, and so in this case, football was the one that fo- sort of drove me. And you feed off of every single one of the individuals you play with um, on your bad day, somebody has a good day. And, and, and so there's so much. And I, so I knew that I wanted to be involved in 
an organization where I could include different types of, of personalities, characters, um, you know, uh, individuals to build an organization. And EMIS sort of helped me organize and really place emphasis on my why. Why, what's my purpose? Why am I doing this? And so I think that that, when I defined that and started working to establish that vision, now looking, you know, fast forward 14 years, going on 15 this January, I see the culture that we've established. And, and you always hear me say we, it's just, it's, it's about the people that are in this organization. Um, but that vision early on has given me that I know where I need to be and I'm not going to stop till I get there. Um, and that's where it comes from, I think. Um, because there's a there's a reason there's a why behind it i did not know the e-myth had any type of training like that yes um i don't know how it is now i mean this was back i took the i took this year-long course in 2007 i did it in 2007 so as i'm starting the business i'm starting trying to figure out how to get a certification how to you know get a, a bank uh, loan and, and all the stuff that you go through with startups. Um, I was taking this intensive one year course and, um, uh, you know, I had a coach that would help me and a lot of writing and reading. Um, I don't know how I haven't kept up with them. I'm not sure. I, if I found them do. on here. Okay. Yeah, I found them. So it, it's really systems. It's creating systems within an organization. And so this is where, um, it really helped me identify, again, from a management perspective, you have your technicians, you have your leaders. Um, and so filling those gaps inside an organization, I think that really helped me. And plus, I mean, what we do is uh, very systematized um, and everything changes. Like you can't do a GSA job the same way you do a core job. The, doc, the, the paperwork's different. Um, and I think that that also helped me from the standpoint of, you know, I like to say that doing government, being a federal contractor, the head of the snake is the paperwork. If you can master that, you know, the field work, I mean, it's the same. It's just the, the administrative part that, that can be um, overwhelming sometimes. I'm, I'm I mean, actually you, writing that down. You, you do a $30 million, you do a $30,000 job uh, for the government and it's the same paperwork as if you did a $30 million job. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, I, 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 I love hearing you say that. I, I tell people all the time um, that want to pursue smaller opportunities, I said, the paperwork is the same. Yeah. Yeah. I go, the paperwork is, I'm telling you, the paperwork is the same as, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's government. So the protocol, everything is exactly the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. And then it, it's just, it's just learning how to, read through those documents and find out just the most important things. Cause again, you sit down and you look at an RFP and it's like, man, but we're talking about this now, you and I, you know, but remember the first time you opened up that RFP, you're like, well, holy moly, I got to read all of this. Yeah. And, and so it's working with um, the small businesses. Um, I do a lot of visits with subcontractors that either are getting their 8A uh, who, you know, need help and, and cause I get it, you get lost. Um, and, and it's just kind of feeling your way through it. But again, I think that question you asked me prior to this one is, is what's, where does that tenacity come from? Where does that drive? I mean, you, you gotta, you gotta be in it for the right reasons. You gotta understand what it is that your ultimate goal or vision is, um, for your business. Um, and that's going to be kind of keep you in line because it, it's very easy to get lost uh, in this process. How, how do you, uh, uh, there's obviously we talked about there's been ups and downs your business. Uh, what are some of the other things that you've done to manage that? Like personally, internally, when you're, you know, you're dealing with HR issues or non-payment or slow payment, how mm -hmm. have you been able to, to keep, I guess your stress levels, your anxiety levels at bay. Well, if you ask my wife, she's going to tell you that I'm, I'm like a walking ball of stress. Um, 
But I think that what has helped me is the mentors that I have found throughout um, my career, um, be it being involved in um, different organizations, um, uh, you know, being uh, the networking. So some of these individuals that I've come across uh, paths with, you know, you, you have an, an opportunity to kind of feed them information get their take on it. Maybe they've already gone through there and, and they know exactly what you're going through. So I've really searched out different mentors. Um, and now, um, you know, I'm not saying we're out of it because this is something that's ongoing. You're always going to hit these roadblocks, but now I have um, some consultants that, that uh, I reach out to that we talk about different strategies and, um, because again, I, I really want to grow um, as our vision statement a, uh, a as a, a premier general contractor in El Paso, Texas. So um, mentors, consultants, um, people that you can bounce ideas or feed off of, uh, hear their stories as well, is what has helped me get through some of these times. When you started off, and we talked about these huge RFPs, uh, how did you handle writing the proposals? Whew. <laughs> oh, you, I'm, I'm listening to you and you don't seem like a proposal writer to me <laughs> no no so i went i went to like i said the proposal writing courses that the sba put on i watched videos i mean you name it um i knew the basics uh of of you know how to establish how to write a, an rfp how to answer the questions that that are being asked of you only in the format um, obviously, they give you those guidelines and tell you exactly what size font you need to use. But my father, as he's a civil engineer and a professional land surveyor, I was able to learn a lot from his team early on because they were doing government work. Um, and um, I sort of, you know, took some of the templates that he had and um, began to create our own. I Down the road, I say uh, 2013, um, I decided to hire a company to help me put a proposal together for a job order contract that we were awarded here in, in, at Fort Bliss. And that was the first time that I outsourced um, our, our uh, proposals. And, and again, from there you learn more um, as your team expands, uh, you get a little more depth. We were able to change some of our write-ups. Um, and so you just kind of improve every year you're improving your proposals. Yeah. No, that's a, that's a good answer. That's a good answer. Um, throughout the 8A program, did you feel and I get that, how did you learn how to navigate the program? Do you feel as though, I know you took a lot of the classes and the courses, but how did you feel, do you feel like you were a success in the 8 program? Yeah, I, I do. And, and I tell people uh, all the time that, um, you know, Aztec is, in my opinion, is the poster child for the way that the program's designed to work. It's okay. a true small business development program. Right. If you use it in its purest form, and we did. We didn't ride on anybody's shirt tail. We didn't do anything where we teamed. I mean, I had several opportunities. And trust me, if anybody wanted to do a mentor protege, it was me because I didn't have the experience. I needed some help. And so, I, I mean, I had great companies look out, um, reach out to us, um, took several trips out to meet with these large companies. But I never got that warm, fuzzy feeling. Something wasn't right. And I knew that you know, I needed to, I needed to keep looking, keep looking and keep looking meant that I ended up graduating from the program without any assistance, um, from any large business. Um, and it was just, again, that pure tenacity that I just got in. Um, I started, you know, uh, continuing the relationships with the clients that we were doing work for, for uh, at the time, um, you know, that contracting officer with GSA, Hey, what else is there? Um, understanding where the government was spending money, what is their need. Uh, now Aztec is uh, a seasoned 8 8 company. Um, give us those mission critical projects that we can help you with that are either there's a short time frame, you need somebody who understands the, the uh, how to get in and out. Um, so it was just kind of one of those deals that you just kept plugging away um, and, and 
you know, the, 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 the conferences, uh, which is the network, um, you know, reaching out to different companies as far as what was, who's doing what it wasn't really until year, year seven, eight and nine, as we were getting ready to graduate, that we started looking at other 8A firms, um, here locally, uh, we're, I was the president of the 8A Contractors Association for our local chapter here, not the national, the local chapter. Um, and, you know, because if you, if I knew what I know now back then, I mean, it would have been a lot easier to maneuver. And this is why I've spent so much time trying to help other companies understand what it takes to do work with the gov government and what, what they need to do because, um, it, I, I lost a lot of time and I don't want that to happen to another young contractor. You know, I was 26 years old when I started this and, um, I didn't know I hadn't, and, and nobody would help me. Honestly, I, I reached out to other contractors and, you know, there's always like this me, 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 uh, side of things. And, and so, um, you know, just trying to find other people that would help you and, and really just trial and error, just stumbling on these things or asking questions or knocking on the door and then having it shut in your face. And then you go to the next one, uh, is pretty much how my experience was with the government. But when I, when I finally found it and we finally got an opportunity, man, we, we, we nailed it. We did our job. Um, and that's the only thing that has, uh, again, speaks louder than words is that we performed, we performed and we were there. Right. No, that's good. Can you tell us about a time where, uh, you know, a situation was really difficult and you were able to come out of it and overcome it? Maybe it was the loss of an employee. Maybe it was a, a job where, you know, you had to bring it, get it back on track. It fell off track. Maybe it was uh, a time where, like you said, you had to reach out to the investors for money. And it's really expensive. Yeah. So there was this one particular project that we were doing on, on Fort Bliss. Um, but it was, we were a subcontractor to a, uh, a private entity that had, uh, I mean, year, I mean, multiple year contract with, with the government. And it was our first subsurface utility job. And I went in uh, with a subcontractor that, again, uh, was, was, was our prime sub. And uh, long story short, he ended up um, not performing. And we tried to bring in another sub, but we couldn't because they were not vetted. So I ended up having to self-perform this project. And um, it, it, it took, took the air out of me. I mean, it was a difficult project. Um, and... You know, we ramped up the manpower to get it done um, and we got to the finish line and, you know, actually this one, we actually got terminated for convenience. Um, so we get to the very end and we get terminated, um, but we, we, we had got them all the way to substantial completion. And, you know, looking back, you know, that job taught me so many lessons. But at the end of the day, it goes back to that tenacity. We didn't quit. We didn't get off that job every day, Saturdays and Sundays. We were out there working. Um, and so there, you know, in our industry, and you know this, uh, Eric, is every day there's a challenge. There's something different that's happening. Um, you know, things go wrong. And um, it's about what you do to step up and, and, and find a solution to make it right. Um, you know, so... Uh, I think there was another project that we did for the core. It was right in the peak of the winter. Uh, and this was a, this was a, a high security office that's tied to the Pentagon and there was snow getting into their server room and it wasn't even on our side of the roof that we were working on. But, um, you know, again, that posed a tremendous amount of challenge and stress on us, uh, working with the core. Uh, with our subs, uh, we were able to mitigate, uh, get the room cleaned up. And actually, um, we got a letter from the Corps uh, uh, thanking us for how we approached, um, how we worked with them to, to, to find solutions to, uh, to some of the issues that we experienced on that particular roof project. Um, so I, I think it's all about establishing uh, expectations with, with, our, with our clients. Um, and 
taking accountability for the things that pertain to us, but also holding our clients accountable. Um, and, and that's, that's how you're going to get through the highs and lows of, of, of contract of federal contract work. I like that you said that you received a letter from the core acknowledging how you handled those issues. Um, I think that's really important for people to understand because when I've written up RFPs and particularly, you know, when we're talking about IDIQs, uh, SATOX, MATOX, they ask, how did you handle, what was the challenge that you had in that project, right? Mm -hmm. And how'd you overcome it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, No, that's absolutely true. And in fact, when we go out and do our capability presentations, you know, and and you mentioned this early on uh, in our conversation is that, I like to talk about those difficult projects. I like to talk about the problems that we had, even the problems that we had with the contract, actually not contracting officer, but the project manager on a specific job, because sometimes there's personality issues on a job where their PM and you know, you're super just they're they're not jiving. And so, um, you know, we, we like to bring those things to light because that, that, that's reality. You know, we all like to say, you know, on time, on budget, um, you know, it, in reality, it's a fight. I mean, it, it, there's so many issues that happen. And if you're able to, to talk open about those, and then that goes back to what I was telling you about being accountable, but holding them accountable too, and being an open book. Um, you know, our cards are on the table. We want your cards to be on the table. We're going to help you get through this and you guys are going to look great. Okay. And we're going to do a good job and we're going to go to the next one. And that, that's kind of how the mentality that we, that we go into in a job, but we lead. That's the one expectation I let them, they, they have to know is that we'll lead them, um, but we need them as well. How do you hold them accountable? What do you say? So, um, you know, now back then we didn't have, we have, we use, a, a you know, with the, the core of engineers, they use uh, RMS. Um, I don't know if you're familiar, with, you probably are familiar with RMS, but okay. so now we use a, a, a construction management software called um, Procore. Are, are you familiar with that? Procore? I know Procore, yeah. Okay. So I love Procore because it allows you to um, see uh, at any given time how you're progressing on the job from RFIs, how many days they've been sitting on your lap, how many days they've been sitting on their lap, um, to um, submittals, uh, your meeting minutes, um, your agendas, everything is, is it's, it's a record. And so whenever we're doing our weekly uh, meetings with the owner, you're talking about different activities that either are slowing your job down, uh, could potentially slow your uh, job down, uh, information that you need to progress, anything that has to do with the timing and the delivery of the project. And so once you start putting those things out there, you know, everybody starts to acknowledge them and even putting them back on your, on your shoulders. So for example, if we have, uh, if we said we were going to do, you know, put the, uh, have a drywall in on the North side of, of, of the building that we're discussing, uh, complete by X date, we hold ourselves accountable to hit that date. And if for whatever reason we're not in the, you know, prior to the meeting, in the meeting, we're saying Aztec did not hit that date. Therefore, we're going to hit this date. And so I think that if you're putting yourself out there and they're put, and you're also putting them again, it, they know that when you sit down at the table, um, you know, things are going to come up and it makes people feel uncomfortable. But I think that that's how they, you earn their trust and their respect because you're, you're not, you're not hiding anything. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. No, um, and by the way, when you see me turn to this, I'm taking notes. <laughs> okay. I love it. No, I'm taking notes. I, I, that makes a lot of sense. Um, and tracking it, because like you said, that, that's the kind of answer I was looking for is, well, how do you show the government that they're not necessarily holding up their end of the bargain? Right. And, and, and it's kind of like, you know, uh, it, you know, you go, you go to any government office and you, I mean, any federal building you've been in and it'll say, if it's not in writing, it never happened. Right. Right. Yeah. See that. And, and, and it, but you have to do it in a way where you don't, you're not threatening them nor they're threatening you. It, it's really accountability. And that's why from the very beginning, 
when you set those expectations with them, so they already kind of know, hey, this is where these, this, this company's coming at this, at this level. And I expect you, you know, we're going to expect you to play at that level as well, because we're going to, we got a job to do. And that's kind of like, that's why I like doing government work, you know, especially like the core to me, doing a core job is, is the epitome of, of a federal contractor. It doesn't get more stringent than the core requirements. Well, the core is tough. That's some, those are big boys. I mean, they, what, you don't mess around with the core. Nah, you, gotta, you don't mess around with the core. They're, they're tough. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, they're tough to work with. So tell us, you said you're working on a $20 million project now with the core. Yeah, we are. Um, so again, um, we were able to team with an Alaska native company on a, on a, on a, total small business set aside project that came out of the Fort Worth district with the Corps of Engineers. Um, and uh, this is, it's a, it's a um, remodel. Uh, it's, a, it's a big building. Uh, that's the old commissary here on Fort Bliss doing really well on the project. It's been great working with MTNT. That's the, uh, the prime uh, on the, on the project of mm-hmm. uh, the Alaskan native company. Again, a lot of same values on how we, we operate. Um, we're also working on a $24 million uh, elementary school. Um, so that's on the commercial side of things. So um, I truly believe, like I said, that Aztec is that poster child for the way the 8A program is designed to work. Um, doing federal work and the attention to detail and what we've learned in the process, I have... I believe and I'm confident that it has prepared us for going into doing large commercial work. Um, because again, talking about that bar, you know, our expectations are really, really high. And I think that everybody feeds off of that, our subs, the owners, um, the construction management company. So, oh, you know, that, that's a very, I'm very proud of that, that, that both those jobs, I'm proud of all the projects, but I mean, for a small business, you know, a $24 million school and, and a $20 million uh, uh, renovation project that, I mean, that's huge for us. That's, you know, it's huge for anyone. I think the two for, yeah, no, I, uh, is that the Joseph Torres elementary school? I'm sorry. Is that Joseph Torres elementary school? Uh Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, so that one's about it. That's a $16 million, the $24 million Archie uh, Duran. uh, Okay. So that's one you're working on now next. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that Bradley, um, um, the Joseph Torres uh, school. That's a unique school, Eric. That is a all concrete structure, uh, ground up. I mean, that is a bunker. I think it, I don't think we have tornadoes in El Paso, but if we were dead, that's where I'm going. <laughs> hey, that's uh, that's funny. I wonder why they did that. I wonder why they set up the requirements. Well, there. and it, and it's a unique school. I mean, I think for 21st century, I mean that that truly is a special school in El Paso. And, and it's, it's so cool to, to be able to do something like that in your community. Um, you know, uh, we, it's just, it's just one, it's the first school project that we've done that we did ground up, uh, plus a remodel of it, uh, of an, of an existing school that's right there next to it. So, um, a lot to be said for that school. And we're very, very humbled to have been a part of that and that the district, you know, went out with us on, on, on being our very first job. Oh, that's, that's, that's great. That's great. What other types of clients are you working for now? I know you mentioned the Corps of Engineers, uh, the school so, district. Yeah. So we do work with the school districts here, um, on the government side, uh, we're GSA, the Corps, army. Um, we're currently on an IDIQ, um, another teaming, uh, agreement with another 8A firm on an IDIQ. Um, the Navy, we had a, a, a contract with the Navy. Um, we no longer have it, but we did it for about five years. We had an office in uh, uh, San Marcos, California. Um, Air Force, CBP, we did some uh, work. You were talking about that job you did right there on the border. Yeah. We were doing these, um, uh, these uh, what do you call it? You know where the, the CBP guys stand and they, they – Cars drive through. These were pedestrians. Yeah. Yep. These little yeah. booths. We did these booths for them, and they were in the middle of nowhere in Arizona, in San Saba and Naco. Uh, and um, so, yeah, CBP, uh, Department of Homeland Security, um, Army, Air Force, GSA Corps, uh, 
we don't do we haven't done much private work um but again that's something that we want to add to our portfolio the city state uh we're doing some work as well i'm looking now um so comstock is near del rio texas yes yeah. so it's about five hours from you in el paso right. but yeah it's uh it's the middle of nowhere there's nothing there either no, there's nothing so, there yeah there's, so there's a funny story about there. del rio uh, Department of Homeland Security. Yeah, yeah, there it is. <laughs> well, yeah, you had a hike, man. No, no, I know, I know, I know. So I remember we got a call from from uh, Department of Homeland Security, and they had these. Um, it was these filters um, uh, uh, at a fuel station. Uh, they wanted these pumps, uh, and I mean we were like, well, we, we built stuff and, and they're like, well, we need somebody out in Del Rio, Brackettville, Carrizozo, and we got to get this job out. And this is September, right? This is year end dump. They need, and I'm like fuel pumps, fuel pumps. And I'm like, okay, we'll get it done. So again, we get out there, knock it out, you know, learned a lot. Um, but, but again, it, it was, be, I felt that we had done work for these clients before they trusted us. They knew, you know, that we would get it done and, and, you know, come hell or high water, we figured it out and, and, um, you know, made sure that the, that we finished the mission. No, that's, that's great. Um, tell me it's, it's interesting. I, I, by the way, like I said, our story is parallel, man, so much. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and I, and th before the recording, everyone, I was telling him that we graduate high school at the same time, graduate yeah. college at the same time. He was doing mortgages, I was doing real estate, and we both went into construction when the market yeah. crashed. So we have very similar paths. Yeah. Um, it's just that I guess around you know 2016, he continued in construction, and I went off and uh, yeah. started teaching, training, and doing more consulting work. Yeah. But uh, even, even the fact that you came to Homestead to work in my backyard, and yeah. I came to Del Rio to work in your backyard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's so when crazy. you were Homestead, I was up in Del Rio. I think that was Probably. around 2012. Comstock. Yeah. I yeah. would have to look at my emails, but I'm pretty sure it was around the same time. Yeah. yeah. I was there. So. I, I just remember I just remember going, uh, flying into Miami, and I just, I think we had Cuban food like every single time, every day we were there. Uh -huh. Oh, that's what's yeah. everywhere it's around. No, I mean, I loved it. I mean, yeah. it, was so, it was so good. And then, you know, working there at Homestead, I mean, it reminded me of like the Navy SEALs. Because, you know, the guys, their choppers, their boats, yeah. uh, CBP, you know, mm -hmm. um, it was pretty cool to be inside of that facility. And, and I was, I mean, I'm not going to lie, Eric, I was scared. Um, you know, I, I don't know why. I mean, and even to this day, every so often, like if I go into one of the big bases, you know, you get those butterflies. Like, I feel mm -hmm. like I'm going into a football game. But, I mean, your first government job, you're, you're in this installation you got to check in. I mean, it's it just, there's something about it that just, it, at least me, it, it may, I get no, nervous. No. I, I'm, thank you for sharing. I think a lot of people seem to, to forget that we are also humans and yeah. we get scared. We have fears. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, I mean, I still get nervous when I go to a new facility or new installation that I've never been or I've never worked at. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I worry uh, as well. Yeah. So thank you for sharing. That's a good point. Yeah. And then like another, you know, advice I, you know, tell anybody who, you know, just, you know, being at, going out there hustling work or going onto a federal installation for the first time or, you know, has a meeting or whatever, you know, get there two hours early. Cause you know, sometimes, you know, I remember I was in Denver and you know, again, I always get there at least an hour before and thank God I did because I had to walk. I took an Uber and the Uber driver didn't have the right ID to get into the base or something. So I had to walk from, from the checkpoint to the, the meeting place. And um. man, I got there and I was sweating. I, it was horrible. <laughs> but so, so, I mean, those are just the things that, you know, it, it helps me get when I get there to a place early, I kind of know the lay of the land, you know, ask questions of where's where, who's who, and um, so that, that, I mean, I think it just, we all go through that. You know, we've always had that horror stories of getting to a base and not knowing where to go. You mentioned Procore, you mentioned the 8A Association. 
Uh, what other resources have you used that's helped you along your path, whether it be an app, software, tools, um, yeah. a book? So Procore for sure has changed the dynamics of how we manage our projects. Um, uh, I've been involved with the Hispanic uh, Chamber of Commerce. They've been a huge uh, resource to Aztec um, on all different types of levels. Um, I'm actually a board member of, of the Hispanic Chamber now. Uh, this will be my first or finishing my first year there. Um, the MBDA, um, the contracting opportunities, PTAC in, in New Mexico, um, just the SBA, uh, you know, just again, the involvement with those organizations, uh, being in the know, uh, being in the same room with contractors that you can feed off of, those that are willing to share information. Um, and, and just knowing who they're talking to uh, will allow you to kind of start asking questions uh, or say, hey, maybe I should ask or look into this uh, organization or what they're looking at. Um, those have been the ones that have been uh, instrumental in helping us. Do you buy off Amazon? I'm sorry? Do you buy off Amazon? 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 Yeah. Do you shop on Amazon? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what's a recent purchase that that you bought on Amazon that made your day? Oh man, that's a good question for my wife because I say nobody comes to visit with a, visit us. When I hear the doorbell, I know it's Amazon because my <laughs> wife or <ordered> something. <laughs> that's a true story. Oh man, what? Well, what? or something she's bought you. Oh, my God, man, I don't know. She she's always buying stuff. Come on, um, but show. I think that one of the things that came in the other day and it's really cool. It's a, it's a little, um, a jiggler, a, a, it's like a shot glass, but it, it measures, uh, you know, different ounces. And I've never seen one like this to where you don't have to have like the big old cup. Uh, oh, measure. so the glass uh, itself measures the ounce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, that, that was probably really cool. And then the other thing too was, um, you know, I don't know why olive oil, if you put them in those little things that have the little nozzle that, they always leak, right? I don't know uh, why. You yeah, buy like a yeah, hundred of them and they're yeah, always leaking. I know you're talking about the metal so, tip. So she, yeah, so she bought one that hopefully is will not leak. So I was pretty excited about that purchase. No, I like that. I, it, it's, um, it tells, you know, it tell, it, normally there's a story always behind it. So that's why I asked the question. It's really cool. Uh, we've got some really good answers out of there. Um, are you a early morning person or late night? No, I'm early. I'm early morning. I'm all, I'm a morning person. So I typically am the first person to get to the office and that's okay. kind of my, my quiet time, um, you know, before everybody comes in, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm an early riser. Okay. All right. Early riser. No, no, that's true. That's true. Uh, any other habits, routines that we don't know about? No. I know you're an athlete, exercise. Yeah. So I just recently got back into the exercise. I had kind of started the COVID actually is what kicked it off, you know? Um, so, um, the exercise is really important to me. Um, it, it makes me feel better. Uh, I'm a better person here in the office and honestly, it just, uh, you know, being around, I love coming to work. I love being around my team. Uh, we recently purchased a new office. We did the remodel you kind of see the, the brick in the background, um, you, you know, so, so it's a special place. This is, this is, uh, this is home. Um, there's a lot of meaning behind it. And, um, again, like I said, it's just, I enjoy coming to work every day. That's great. I, 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 um, I don't know a lot of people that can say that, you know, yeah. so that's, that's wonderful that you've been able to surround yourself with people that, you, you know, uh, part of your team that you want, that you choose. Yeah. Right. Yeah, no, we got good culture right now. Good culture. Oh, that's excellent. Um, I'm going to let you go. A couple things. Uh, where's there a time where you had someone that wasn't a cultural fit? Yes. Okay. Yeah, no, we've gone through a series of those. Um, sometimes they uh, wing themselves out, and, and other times, you know, those are decisions that we've had to make. Um, hmm. No, no, that makes that makes a lot of sense. Uh, can you remember the last time you did an all nighter? Ooh, yeah, I can. <laughs> um, it was uh, 2000, 2011. Uh -huh. uh, it was an IDIQ that we were putting together for the army on horizontal work. It was the tank trails, 
And um, uh, that's a proposal that we did not outsource. We put that together ourselves and, and uh, it was in October. I remember it was close to Halloween. Um, <laughs> and uh, we put in some, I mean, we put in two nights or two days of just, you know, long, long, long hours. Is that a story that now that you talk about inside? Yeah, it is because now as we built our team and, you know, we, we just recreate or not recreated, but we restructured our business development uh, department. I see some of the, those like uh, moments like, Oh my God, you know, this or that. And so I know what they're going through. Um, and so looking back, you, you, you know, you, you try to offer advice, uh, get started early, you know, but Sometimes, like for me, I work better under pressure, you right. know, and I was like, I always, I was a procrastinator and I so always wait, like, ah, oh, why do I do this to myself, you know? Right. Um, and so I try to offer the advice, but yes, I mean, it, it, those are all great memories. Those are, that's part of the development um, that I think that the 8A program or, or just being a, 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 a contractor, right. it, it puts you in, you know? Right. right. Uh, I know you mentioned the E-Myth, the book. Are there any other books that you give to your team or associates or even your 8A mentor, mentees that you're mentoring? Yeah, so um, there's there's several. I mean, I'm a big fanatic of, you know, um, self-help books. Um, but one of the ones that, um, and I, again, coming to work, I always watch, you know, the or listen to the, the motivational uh, videos. Um, Again, uh, very much athletic oriented, you know, every year we do a kickoff. So this year's uh, kickoff meeting, and this is where everybody from the company comes to the office. And um, we had, um, have you ever heard, watched that HBO documentary? Uh, it's uh, Nick Saban and um, Bill Belichick. Uh, I'm not, no. Okay. You need to watch that, Eric. I'm it's, putting it it's, down. It's um, so the 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 takeaway of that documentary for for my team was do your job, um, and it's the art of coaching. Uh, so it's Bill Belichick, Nick Saban, art of coaching. It's an HBO documentary. Um, watch that, and I just wanted to get the point across to our team is do your job. And, and you, when you say do your job, it, it you know. It's not in a rude or a bad manner. It's if everybody's focused on doing what they're supposed to, then this this is a fine-tuned machine. It, it, it's, it, we have consistency. You know, I talk about being reliable, predictable, and consistent. Um, and if we're all doing those things, and again, tweaking and working on our systems of operation, um, because we, we truly are a turnkey operate, you know, we, we operate turnkey. And so those things are important to me. Um, and, you know, one of the things that sticks out in my mind, it was, I think it was Alabama. Alabama's playing like New Mexico State in Alabama. It's like six seconds left in the clock. New Mexico's at the goal line. And one of the players, I mean, and they're beating New Mexico State like 62 to 7 or something like that. And six seconds in, Nick Saban, you know, calls timeout because I think it was his lineman, his right guard was lined up incorrectly, you know. And and to me, that was like, okay, well, some people look at say, well, six seconds, you're beating them by, you know, 50 points. You know, what's, you know, but he wanted um, people to pay attention and not lose their head. And, and I think that that says a lot for kind of what, in, in our situation, or businesses in general, is if we look at the little things, if we take care of those things, then, you know, when it's, when the big things happen, you, you're there, you got it. And so, um, at least I, I like, I mean, that's how I look at things. Um, I'm always looking at the little things, uh, paying attention to detail and, and pushing our team to, to try to do better, um, find a ways to improve. Um, so yeah, you need to watch that. I, I think you'd, you, you'd, you'd enjoy it. Now, Frank, actually, I was going to ask you to say some parting words, but I mean, that was pretty solid. Okay. <laughs> I yeah. mean, I, I don't know if you could top what you just said. I mean, if, you know, that's, mm -hmm. that was pretty solid, but I, I really, 
I like that. I, I thought that was no, a great we'll leave way. it at that. I'll, I look forward to ne- another conversation with yeah. you. This has been truly been a, a, a treat visiting with you, Eric. Uh, thank you for what you do for, for small businesses and um, allowing those of us that have sort of kind of um, come through the school of hard knocks, an opportunity to share um, our story. And, and again, if I could help any, any of the people that, that you've assisted or, people have questions, I'd be, be glad to help. And I, cause honestly, I, I'm learning. I'm still, right. I'm learning. Right. Um, no, I agree. I think we're all learning. And one of the things that one of my guests said is that as small businesses, we should be working together, not against each other. Exactly. We're not the big guy, you know, right? None exactly. of us are the big guy. And, and yeah, you may have some wins that I don't have right now, but right. It, it could five years from now, I could be the guy that has the wins that you then turn to for assistance. Exactly. And you just never know in this, this world of government contracting. Um, so I, I definitely think that that's a great, I appreciate that. Uh, how can people reach you, Frank? What's the best way you want to be reached out to? LinkedIn? Um, you know, the best way for me is through email. You know, LinkedIn, okay. what happens is those email, those, the emails get lost. And, right. and, and it, it's my email, I, every day I'm looking at that. Right. So. Fair. You know, the email f.spencer at asktechcontractors.com okay. uh, is the best way to reach me. And um, I'm always responsive to my emails. The, the LinkedIn, I really feel bad. I got to get better at doing that because I know a lot of people reach out through that. Um, but that's one kudos I give to Maria because she sent an email through LinkedIn, but she followed up through with an email to the to my actual email. And, and, right. and uh, that's that's that caught my attention. So. Okay. Now we'll make sure to have that information on our website um, when, when this goes live and we'll keep you on as well. And yeah, no, I did not get to ask all the questions I wanted to, but that's okay. I, I think, um, you know, we, uh, this is a great start and this is great. We appreciate you sharing your journey, your story. And I'm telling people, this is going to benefit so many folks in the future. Um, and I, and I see good, po- only positivity and positive things happening out of this because so many people are coming into the 8A program that are looking for guidance, resources, help, assistance. And even if you can steer them in the right direction, I think that that's a plus. So, No, absolutely. Keep up the great work. work and, and I think now more than ever, the 8A program, I've seen a decline yes. of 8A contractors on our on this side. Right. Um, I don't know. I think that it... it resonates a lot throughout the country. So I really think that those eight days or those individuals that are riding the fence, Hey, should we do eight days? Should we not? Or those that are in it and haven't done anything. This is the time that you need to get aggressive. You need to go out there and get focused. Um, do what you can to get as involved as, as you can in the program when given the opportunity, do it right. Um, and you know, keep hitting some, some singles. You're going to get some doubles then you get triples and then you're going to hit a home run and that's kind of how this thing works. And so that would be my, 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 you know, sort of last advice, you know, if you will. Thank you, Frank. Thanks so much for coming on today. Thank you. Be safe.